Joining us, kicking off tonight, it's ironic that the same day we get the results of a huge electoral mandate for change, we get the Federal Reserve Board essentially giving us the same medicine that's failed miserably to do what it is designed to do. Voters just rejected policies that aren't working. They think it's time for a change. But neither the president nor the Fed seem to get it. The Fed today announced it's going to print another trillion dollars or so after having already created trillions of dollars to stimulate economic expansion. But this printing of money to buy government debt, it hasn't worked. Banks are still not lending. Potential home buyers are still not buying. And companies that have cash are holding on to it instead of expanding and creating jobs. Of course, some folks love what the Federal Reserve is doing. The big spenders in Congress and the White House, they just love it. When the Fed buys government debt, it enables politicians to spend even more money they don't have. And Wall Street banks love to borrow cheap money, which they use to buy gold and make currency bets. Now, on the other side of the tracks is the average American who is getting killed by a beaten down dollar. Costs more to buy food, for one thing, as commodity prices spike. Savings are losing their value as the dollar devalues and interest rates are pretty much at zero. Also, as our dollar loses value against other currencies, everything that we buy that is made overseas, and you know that's most things now, is going to start costing more. All this even has some Wall Street types getting worried. A big hedge fund guy named Paul Singer warned last month that the Fed's money printing is going to lead to inflation that, quote, no American can imagine. He says the threat of Weimar Republic-style inflation keeps him up at night. And we admit sometimes it keeps us up at night as well. So as Americans are waking up to what is working and what is not working, the folks in the White House and at the Fed appear to be asleep at the wheel. Is there any designated driver that can keep this car from turning into a major wreck? Well, some point to our next guest as a sober observer of what is going on. From Texas, we welcome Representative Ron Paul, a frequent and very appreciated guest at Scoreboard. Good to see you, Doctor. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, David. Well, you know, first of all, we're going to get to the Fed. I know our audience wants to hear about it. You want to talk about it. But i got to congratulate you on Ray and Paul. Your son just blew away the competition last night. Uh, any advice? Did you call him up to offer any? Well, he called shortly afterwards. He called awfully early, and he was awfully surprised it was so early. He didn't have his shirt and tie on yet. So, yeah, we talked a little bit, and uh, we're, we're, we're talking about what we might do. One thing he'd like to do is have a joint party on our swearing-in day, which oh. would be uh, beneficial or very nice for both of us. That's, that's, that's kind of nice, but beyond the parties, any yeah. specific advice on how we should govern? Well, yes, he, you know, I suggest to him we have a, at least one specific bill that we introduce on the first day that both of us are there, and he says, how about end the Fed? So, uh, end the Fed or audit the Fed, we'll do something with monetary policy right, well, there, on our you, first day you, to, to make a point. You, you bring us very seamlessly, you make a segue to our next <laughs> subject, which is the main subject of the day, what the Fed did today. You know, I, as, as important as these elections were, and don't get me wrong, I think they were the most important thing that happened today. But seriously, what the Fed is doing scares the heck out of me, doctor. I don't know about you. and Actually, I do know about you. It scares you as well. But isn't the Fed just monetizing this debt that's being built up by politicians? Absolutely, and they, they continue to do it, but it's not only the debt that they buy, but you know, when they grant loans to banks and have the banks uh, buy debt, that's monetizing debt too. So the balance sheet of the Fed isn't the only thing to look at to find out how much debt is being monetized. So yes, th th it, is, it is scary. And uh, I, I just don't know when they're going. You said enough is enough. I say enough is too much. Yeah, <laughs> They've been doing yeah. too much of this. Well, we've seen for it so before. But I think we've seen it. We've seen it before in the United, not just the Weimar Republic where we saw superinflation, but, but in the United States when when we saw in the in the 60s and 70s uh, the guns and, and butter policy that that a, a very compliant Federal yeah. Reserve, very much like Mr. Bernanke, kept buying up this government debt, and and it it eventually led to very high inflation that it took us years to get over. 
Well, they, they get to be too arrogant for themselves. They think they can manage it. They think they can endlessly print the money and create the credit, and also that they can modify the prices going up. But you know what? They don't understand that inflation, the increase in the supply of money and credit, is the disease. It causes the malinvestment and causes a pyramid of debt. And sometimes, or at least eventually, it will push up prices. They claim that they can inflate and yet, if they don't see prices rising, they're free to do as much as they want. And I think that's an absolute fallacy because prices, you know, are unpredictable. There's a subjective value in pricing, and they figure that they can control this. So the, 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 the whole program yeah. is so fallacious. It's completely well, wrong. Well, they think they can control and of it. Course, just, they think that they can sort of ease us into inflation. Of course, inflation is, is the, the best way for the government to steal money from the public because it, it, it makes it much cheaper for them to pay off their debts. We get this bracket creep where people have to have higher wages uh, in order to keep up with inflation, so it pushes them into higher tax brackets, so the government gets more money that way. It's, it's an insidious right. process. Well, let's, let's link what the Fed is doing to what happened with the election. Is there anything that you and your son, Rand Paul, and all the new Tea Party types can do to rein in the Fed? Not under current conditions. You saw what happened when we tried to audit the Fed last year, and they were strong enough to silence us, you know, in the conference and in the Senate. And they'll continue to do that. Hold, hold on a second. Before you go further, and... how precisely did they silence you? I know you're a hard man to silence. Well, we got it passed on the House. You know, I even, you know, got it on that finance, that disastrous bill, but I was willing to at least put it on that bill. But when it went to conference, uh, the conference rejected it. So they had a lot of influence. They worked very, very closely with the Senate and the different people involved. And they, they voted, they worked with the House too, you know, some of the members, but they didn't win in the House. But when it went to the conference, they were able to get it removed. And, and even if it had been passed, they're not going to respond to it, just like they don't respond to the Freedom of Information Act. So they're very, very powerful and they're very, very independent. What really bugs me about this, though, is this is all off the books. You say, yeah. what can we do in the Congress? We're actually irrelevant when it comes to the Fed today decides, well, 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 We'll spend another trillion dollars to central, plan, you know, central economic plan. They they don't have a right to do that. It's morally wrong. It's unconstitutional, and it's economically disastrous. And the people are just starting to wake up, but they are waking up. And I think they're going to hear from us here in the next couple of years more so than ever. Well, but it might even be. Forgive me, doctor, but it might even be before a couple of years. Uh, your your colleague from Texas, a Republican from Texas, Randy Nugberger, Nugbauer, excuse me he apparently wants to hold hearings wants to have you as a part of it too with the financial services committee uh, I understand that that be, besides the hearings in order to try to rein in the Fed you are going to be on a new subcommittee on monetary policy so it it looks like the wheels are starting to turn on this yeah, it isn't a new committee, and it's been quite a few years that I've been bumped to run, and I didn't get the committee when we were in, in uh, charge before. But right now, I do believe uh, that I will have the chairmanship of the subcommittee on Mo domestic monetary policy, and that will give me a lot of ability to do more of what I have been doing. So that, and with the help of others, and with the sentiment around the country. See, the sentiment in the country had to be strong to get 320 co-sponsors of that bill. Would you, Republican by the way, would Democrat. you have the power of subpoena would you be able to do what fox business has not been able to do which is break to break that information barrier of the fed you, you do you do have the power of subpoena whether we get that far or not i don't know i personally only believe in the power of subpoena for federal officials and the federal reserve people like this i don't i don't like to see the congress subpoenaing uh, you know bringing in private companies. I have a little reservation on that. But mm -hmm. when it comes to the executive branch or the Federal Reserve, we should insist. So far, I think in the past, they have responded. Uh, you know, they do come in and they, uh, they, you know, they have all their answers lined up. But I, I think there's going to be a very, very serious effort because the attitude in the country has changed. The Congress yeah. is changing. We have the Banking Committee and Randy Neugebauer. He's willing to help. So I'm, I'm optimistic that we're going to hear a lot more about how 
how the Fed operate, how the how the Fed operates. And to me, that is what is important. I always assume if you can get the Fed and show the people what's happening, then we will talk about monetary reform. But to to me, it's getting rid of this cartel, this secret cartel. Yeah. It isn't even nine people. Not being, it's one person. They're dictators and they're economic planners. Well, particularly and they've been when, doing they, it for when they're operating in tandem with the the Treasury Department, which is essentially what's happening as they as they monetize the debt of these of these free spenders. Doctor, stay with us because we want to bring in somebody who I know you know and respect, a Fox News senior judicial analyst and Freedom Watch host, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Great to see you. Good to see you. Now, too. do you share uh, uh, Ron Paul's lack of enthusiasm for for subpoenaing? Uh, members of the Fed in order to get them to reveal well, stuff that they no, haven't no, been revealed. No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Doctor. No, that's not... I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 would, I would subpoena the Fed, not private companies. Oh, right. I see. Okay. So right. he's, so he's for that. First the of all, Fed and, and, and executive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't make that clear. All right. First of all, Congressman Paul, congratulations on your own re-election and on the triumph uh, of your son, the senator. I guess he sort of outranks you now that he's a senator. <laughs> that would be hard to do. Seniority uh, wins in this case. Uh, I agree with everything yeah. Congressman Paul has said. I, too, have antipathy towards subpoenaing, for example, a baseball player and having him testify about the contents of his urine. Right. But subpoenaing Ben Bernanke... Which they have done. Which, of course, they have done. I would not only advise the congressman to subpoena Ben Bernanke, I would advise him to serve what's called a subpoena deuces tecum. Fancy phrase for... And you shall bring with you the following. And in that list of the following would be their checkbook, their ledger book, all of their files and records. They'll refuse, and then the House will present the subpoena to a federal judge who hopefully right. will enforce it. All right, it. well, here's the thing, and Judge, I'll go to you first on this. The Fed still describes itself as a private institution, even though what it does affects the money in all of our pockets. Whenever they, they print uh, billions or trillions of dollars more, it affects us. Hold on a second. What, what Randy Nogbauer wants to do, and what uh, Ron Paul wants to do along with him, is to come up with some kind of legislation to force them to be accountable every time they print money. That is, they won't have a, a free ticket to run those printing presses and devalue the currency in our pocket. Does Congress have that power? Well, the answer Judge. is the answer is yes, but this president would not sign such legislation. In fact, no president, unless the president were Ron Paul or Rand Paul or someone who truly understands the monster the Fed has become, would sign that legislation. But the subpoena power can be perfected without the involvement of the president, with simply the use of a federal judge uh, to enforce it. But we need more, Dr. Paul, we need more than information. We need to stop these guys from devaluing our currency, don't we? Yeah, absolutely, but I think the information is going to get the attention of a lot more people. No, I agree with you absolutely. It's a race because I think they're going to self-destruct. They're going to destroy the money at the rate we're going and at the rate the Congress is reining them in. But we have the authority, even though they call themselves private and people assume they're private, they're secret. It's been created by government. It was created by the Federal Reserve Act, and we could in one day repeal the Federal Reserve Act. You know, that's all we need to do, and that would do it. I don't consider that, I consider that a little more disruptive than I want, but uh, I still think that's the, the ultimate okay. goal. Okay, I know uh, Judge wants it, but let me just ask you one more question, do another round. Uh, Dr. Paul, you did have a lot of support in trying to get information out of the Fed. You had a co-sponsor, I think you had like 200 uh, members of Congress going along with you with this new Congress so, that's come in. Aren't you more likely to actually achieve the goal of reigning in the Fed? And and, and might we, we live within the next couple of years to the point where we do see the Fed unable to continue to devalue our currency? Well, actually, we had 320, so we had a large number, well over the 218 that we needed. No, I think it's going to be easier. I mean, is this good? I'm going to bring it up immediately. It'll be brought up constantly in the subcommittee that I will be chairing. And, uh, yes, we're going to get more support. We still have to think about the Senate. But I understand we've improved the Senate a little bit on this election, so I think we'll get more support over there as well. Judge, is it going to happen in our lifetime? I don't think it's going to happen unless they have the votes to override the veto of the, uh, of the president. 
And that's why the subpoena power will work. But look, we're on the same side here. We both want the public to know what's going on. And I fully agree with Congressman Paul. A simple audit, a simple awareness on the part of the public of what the Fed has been doing would be such a catastrophe to the Fed's power. It would stop it in its tracks. What an eye-opener that would be. Dr. Paul, thank you very much for coming in again. Congratulations on the victory of your son. And as the judge points out on your uh, re-election as well. Judge, good to see you. Thank now, if you, you missed any of our Ron Paul interview or other highlights from the show, you can watch it online. Log on to foxbusiness.com slash scoreboard and you can see